let's try this again. Uh, this is uh, a video I've been meaning to do for a while. Uh, people have asked uh, occasionally uh, I should do a stated collection, but um, I've never actually had a very stable collection to stop and take a snapshot and show off just what I have. And um, I still don't actually right now, but I figure now it's about as good a time as any. So why don't we get into it? Um, I used to have a lot more, but this is currently what I've condensed things down to. So if you've watched my videos, it seems like I have a lot of watches and I did go through a lot, but um, I also sold a lot because I can't keep them all and I've been trying to concentrate and get things down. Um, especially since, okay, there's this watch box holds 12 and I was up to a point where I had actually three, at least three other like watch rolls or something too to hold some of the excess at some point, I believe. And hang on a second. And so actually this should be in here too. And shortly, uh, I keep this separately for for some reason, but we'll get to that one in a second. But um, anyways, uh, I have some stuff for sale still. Um, and some stuff might still go. And I'm going to go into a co collection contemplation uh, at the end. <laughs> so let's get into it. Uh, so anyways, this is what we have now. This is a uh, like a toolbox sort of style. Uh, from uh, the Wind Up Watch Shop, uh, Worn and Wild that is, and some of you might be familiar with it. Uh, I like this military green color. Uh, they come in a, a nice, like, kind of a bright blue, a pretty solid blue and a, a nice red, and I think maybe a black, possibly. But this one spoke to me. I like the things that are kind of military theme, and that kind of gives it that look. And I also like this design. We'll just talk about the wash box real quickly. It was or is kind of pricey. I think it was over three hundred dollars or something. And um, yeah, and if you see my video prior where I modified this to upgrade it, improve it, uh, you you would definitely think that yeah, it's kind of expensive. But I like this particular style, and I didn't want to go around to making all the custom stuff that might go into it to to make my own tool watch box type of thing so uh it is what it is and i think they are cheaper at least you can get them occasionally on when they have their sales too so that should help um and so yeah it's made out of metal i think there's a like glass too overall the construction is pretty solid it's got these flip out handles on, on either side here you probably can't see it, it's, so, it's just out of view, but trust me, there are these uh, silver kind of chrome plated uh, metal handles that kind of hold up so you can hold it this way. And I'll keep it down for now. And then on the bottom, there's some bumper feet. And on the back of here, there are some too. So when you open this up, um, it'll kind of rest on that and won't scratch the, the paint where this lid might meet the back there. Um, so real quickly, uh, modifications, I mean, you got these cushions and then this wooden frame and this, it was lined with this black felt around here, but some important things that it was missing was that the inside of these were not lined. It was just straight wood, which is kind of weird to me. It's like, well, if you're these are not the most secure, you know, they can still move, even though this will probably sit mostly on a desk or somewhere, right? Uh, there is a possibility when you're picking it up, pulling something out, you might have to roll it out. And believe me, you had to roll it out before I modified it. Um, you can rub up against, you know, the wood. It's not the most coarse, but it's still a texture and you don't want that. So I lined it with black felt that's very similar to this. Or at least on here and here. I'm not too concerned about the size because none of the washes should be that close to the size anyway. So, but maybe someday I might redo that, but that wasn't really necessary. And I was worried that that might make it just a tiny bit too tight if I reinsert it and try to pull it out. We can add that extra felt layer on the size. It might be, you know, you might have to re pull it out. And that was an issue. You had to, because these were actually a bit more inset. Um, the watches actually sat 
below this line, the frame lines. So it's so you really have to reach in there and it's kind of tight and you don't have really much room to grab other than like maybe the bezel if, if it even has that. Like say this guy here, it'd be kind of hard if it's in there deeper. So I added this uh these foam paddings and I custom made like a a leather kind of uh, faux leather uh texture on uh, you know layer on top just to give it a more finished look it doesn't look like it's just rubber or foam and so it looks like it's lined with leather on the inside so you, you might be able to see from this angle and if you see my my video that I did that where I uh, made the improvements you'll see what I did and so that helped raise everything up higher so you can see it better it was a bit too inset um, I would say maybe I don't think you have to I kind of don't mind seeing the wood frame but uh, maybe I might line this with black felt later but I don't know I don't think that's too necessary so let's get into the watches toast 12 and that's the thing I wanted to keep everything down to at least this box this was the main one I didn't want to go out to other watch rolls and, and floater containers that contain other watches and have to search for watches and it's just too much of a mess. I wanted it all in one spot. So, so far, condensed it mostly to this. I do have this guy here, which is for my G-Shock, which I modified. This is the, bad with the reference numbers, but this is basically the adrenaline red, uh, you know, solar, tough solar G-Shock uh, that I started off with and then I modified it. Uh, I originally had a, these are kits from AliExpress, there's a bunch of them. You need a link, ask me. They might still be active, but sometimes they, this, they aren't, and then you just have to kind of refine it. But I think this is from G Refit or something like that. Um, I think that was a store, but there's a lot of places that sell things. So I, I have the kind of grayish type original, like titanium, digital ti titanium pattern one. You look at my old videos, you know. That was cool, but it wasn't really the look I was. I thought it would be. Uh, and then when they found out, came up with this virtual armor, the real one that was what it's pretty expensive. It's at least two thousand dollars or something like that. It's up there. Um, that was nice, but I didn't want to spend that kind of money. And luckily, I just happened to be looking around. This might have been almost two years ago. Back in twenty twenty one, I think it's. Uh, no, that's when I made my first mod. This one later, about was it earlier this year or late or sometime maybe last year. Uh, I look at my videos, but then they finally got the virtual armor. And I said yes, and uh, and I modified it. And we'll just take a look at this real quick. Get the Casio G Shock out of the way. It basically has all the design features of that the original one, and I just love that that you know, the place with the red of um, the screen and the black and the gray motif. I wanted something that I love sci-fi and one of my favorite shows is uh, The Expanse and there are a group, uh, there's Earth, Mars, um, and the Belters, people that are beyond the the asteroid belt in, the, in our solar system and the faction that belongs to Mars, the armor, kind of reminds me of this and their ships too. I don't... Um, Let's see here. I don't think this is going to fit on the screen, but you can see here. This is a I have a scale model of the Rosinante, which is the the main ship from the series of the the heroes. And this is it had went through a couple of paint jobs, but this is the one that uh, kind of for the majority of the show, I think, besides the the more grave out version earlier on. Um, so you can see how it's like got this black and red and color scheme, uh, scheme and it looks like this and then if you look at some of the Martian military armor they also have uh, this kind of general look they have like a visor that has like a red kind of you know light inside and I don't know I like that and I just this is kind of like uh, my tribute to that without being so literal but it just makes me it reminds me of that series and and it looks cool. I mean, in general, this this design from Casio looks cool. Now, you know, 
some people might object to the fact that it actually says G Shock and all that. Uh, but, you know, I don't mind. Uh, you know, it's just, is it a fake? Is it a, you know, um, is it a fake? Are you trying to sell um, uh, a, a replica or something? No, I'm not selling anything. I, you know, I, I, it's, it's all in your, your, how you come across as representing this. If you say this is a genuine Casio uh, that no one's seen before or something, then yeah, that you're a lying S of S. Um, but no, I don't do that. I mean, I tell people if they ask, I said, yeah, this is, um, it started off as this, and then I got this kit. And so basically it's a modified Casio to look kind of bespoke and that's how it come off. And, and that's fine. Anyways, I don't want to talk too much uh, detail because I got a lot of watches to go through and I got something at the end. I wanted to kind of run my thoughts across. So I didn't have room for all this and I figure since it's a solar power too, it will go into standby mode if nothing happens to it. I was assuming it knows that it's been in the dark for a while so that's why I kind of keep it in this. Because uh, if I had it in this and I generally I don't gravitate towards digital watches as much as analog. So I will most likely pick one of these more often than not. Uh, then I didn't want to have that thing turn on and off just for me opening and trying to get to the other watches. That's why it's kind of covered in, in darkness by itself so it can keep asleep and preserve the batteries. Um, where do I start? I guess some of the oldest ones would be, they're not super old either, would be from around 2021. And currently, I think there are only two that are from that time. And that would be the Serica 5303 1. That is the black dial version. And this is, um, you know, um, this is the one that originally came out back in late, basically pre ordered mid 2021, I think. And then you get it right about late 2021. And it did have the crown problem or issue, but it's not really that big of an issue for me. I don't think it should be for anybody else, but. Since then, they, I think they changed the, updated the movement to something else. It's still so proud, but it's not the same one that was in this one, which is a Newton. And uh, it does have a wanky crown, but I mean, I still have it and I still enjoy it. And it's one of my favorite watches. And uh, I love the design. It's very original, yet it makes you feel, you know, like something vintage too, but you can't put your finger on it and, you know, just to be, but it's modern, and I love the multifunction uh, bezel. If this thing would focus, if this thing would focus, really, it's not gonna focus. There we go. Sorry. I guess we have to get out of white screen, anyways, um, or wide view. Yeah. So this, it's just. Nice watch. It's 39 millimeters, but because of the dial to bezel ratio, it really almost feels like a 38, even borderline 37 on, on wrist visually. Uh, it just, I don't know, something about it also, it looks nothing like it, but it, it has this thing that makes me feel like it's like a vintage Submariner or something, but it totally doesn't look like it, but yet uh, it does make me kind of remind me or make me have that kind of feeling about such a watch. I don't know. Um, it's been fairly accurate out of the box. Never had to mess with it. I think it's within plus or minus one or two seconds or so. Uh, very good. I mean, the state of tolerance is very tight too. I think it was plus four, minus, plus or minus four. Something like that. It's really tight for this this movement, uh, which is the top flight, which is the best version of this Newton movement at the time. And uh, yeah, it's super cool. It's thin. It's compact. It's it's my vintage style without being a complete copy of anything. It's original too, and you know I like the fact that it's different. It's not just another you know mainstream you know. Uh, vintage watch that you know it's, those are great but uh, I want something I like something a bit different as you may kind of figure out here 
Next would be this guy, which is my Zen 103 Classic 12. This is on currently on one of its two uh, original uh, leather straps. This is like the pig skin that's in a dark green color, which is pretty cool against this. I like the choice of it. Sometimes it almost looks black, but it looks good. I think this will look excellent on one of those Artem sealed claw straps that's an olive drab. Uh, I really want to get one of those, but to get the nice full setup is quite expensive. It's almost 200 bucks for one, and then those other colors you might want to get too. And I'll get into that talk later, but this has been a pretty good, um, it's excellent chrono raft. It's, uh, it's, uh, Basically a bow juice base, but you know, I'm sure Zen took the liberties on this on the movement and I just love how big the um, display case back, uh, you know, is here. It's just very open and you can just see so much, you know, usually everything's closed up and most other uh, watches have an open case back, but I love how this is just so big. <laughs> And because it's got a dome sapphire in the back as well, it gives it a slight magnifying effect. So I think it kind of makes things look more, in, there's more depth to it and also kind of brings it closer to the viewer. And so, yeah, it is kind of thick. I believe they say it measures about 17 millimeters or so. But you got, and that's from top to bottom. But oh, here, why don't we just do this real quickly? I just wanted to make sure I'm not talking out my ass here. Yeah, 17-ish, 17.2. But you guys keep in mind that you still have those double dome uh, sapphire crystals on both the top and the bottom, which for me, visually, I think, I hope you can see that, come on. But I believe from what I can tell, that probably, both of them together, I would say could add up to at least three millimeters of that thickness. So, if you just took that into account, then if it's roughly 14 millimeters or so, that's actually not too bad. And actually, for what I can do here, look, check this out. I'm just measuring, trying to measure just the top of the bezel and the bottom of the case, and I get 13 point something. All right, 13.6 or so. So yeah, I mean, under, I mean, the case, the metal parts, including the bezel, under 14 millimeters, it's not actually that bad. And it, it this part sinks into your wrist. And it's, I think they did a great job at dividing up the um, the side so that's not one fat slab. And then you've got a mid case and then you got the bezels divided in this. There's a, a case back also divided and it just goes under. And it actually doesn't wear too bad. It's actually way more comfortable than some might believe because you think, oh, that size, 41, it is a 41, but it's the same as a, a Zen 104, but it is just a bit thicker because it's a chronograph, automatic chronograph movement. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's actually quite comfortable. I've never had any problems with comfort, unwieldy, the buttons and stuff never go into my wrist. You, you know, it's just, it's a good watch, and it's a very handsome watch, is what I like to say. And, I'm trying to keep this clean. Um, very nice, precise, smooth, but very affirmative, like clicking, uh, ball bearing action. And this uh, 12 click, uh, uh, 12 hour bezel, I guess. And so you can kind of, it's a pseudo GMT, or I guess you can use it to track, maybe if you're doing hours or something too. Um, screw down button pushers, which I don't mind. It keeps the water resistance, which is 200 meters. And you still have the, the capsule here. Come on. Yeah. And I don't know why, it looks a lot bluer in this video, but it really isn't that blue. It's actually very uh, pale blue, which is basically the way it originally came. It doesn't come in a bright white. Uh, this capsule here is supposed to indicate if uh, how much moisture is in there that's absorbing. And, and if it goes really blue, then it's time to change it. And I believe it has, it says it has AR, 
I think dehumidifying uh, AR technology basically and some of the watches they fill with argon gas but I believe uh, it's been some time they've changed the gas I'm not sure what it is but some sort of inert gas so that it keeps things dry and and you know moisture free and, and so it should keep the movement working very well for a long time so um, yeah I shouldn't open this up just in case you don't want to let those gases escape um, but yeah this has been running about plus six seconds five six well, closer to six seconds today which is perfectly acceptable and uh yeah and i love the fact that everything's a little bit off white it's not a pure uh black and white except for the print those are white but everything else is actually uh an off white color and you can see you catch it generally looks like a nice deep glossy black dial but uh there is some it's, my lights are kind of messing with it but you kind of catch there is some radiance especially if you go outdoors and catch in the right light you can get this almost a dark gray radiance to it uh, which is cool um and i love all the indexes it's very nicely polished and all the sub dials has this nice frame around them and yes i have a date at the four but i don't mind it keeps everything else symmetrical it doesn't intrude in any of the sub dials or uh, indexes uh, and they did it in a good way where it's just subtly very plainly cut out with a matte black uh, date disc and then, so it just disappears and there's no real attention grabbing to it it's it I barely notice it most of the time anyways and it's placed pretty symmetrical within this corner of space so it's not like oddly butting up against anything irregularly compared to everything else um, what else can I say yeah, and the fact that, you know, these indexes and the, all the other deals just pop anyways, that just sends that to the background. So if you can do that, then, you know, a date down there is not a big deal. I think it's about as good as it can be, but unless you cut into maybe the this, this, this 6 o'clock subdial area, which I kind of don't like uh, messing around with, uh, knocking out any of the subdials. But anyways... This one I will put back. Jeez, how am I going to get through this without this being too long? It's already 20 minutes in. We're just going to go through this real quickly then. Um, and I have some reviews on these, but I really do have to work on a lot. Uh, what's next? I would say this came next, which would be the Seiko SBEC 005. And this is a limited edition for their, I'm pretty sure it's the 50th anniversary of their speed timer. Um, very cool. I forget the, forget the exact model reference off the top of my head, but it's not an exact copy but um, of that, that one that it's referencing. But almost all the details, the tachymeter, the subdials uh, for the tech, you know, for the chronograph. There should be actually one and two here. There was no running seconds on the old one, but I like the the way they did this. It's just subtly there and this kind of disappears. It's not. It just shows that it's running, but the main timekeeping elements that you're going to use the chronograph for are at the forefront. They've got nice sort of syringed hands. Even the text, the way they're printed on that tachymeter, is the same as the vintage ones. With this nice brushed finish to that dial um, and the case I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a Ratsu finished uh, it just has this extraordinary bit of sh luster and and polish and 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 it's very cleanly sculpted and the lines and everything um, it just works and for 41 Compared to this one, I did a comparison of my three chronographs that I used to have. This actually was kind of small too. Actually, once you get it on wrist, because the dial really does kind of shrink because it has that black frame. And uh, yeah, it's this is what's pretty wearable also and pretty comfortable. Um, next, uh, I guess this one is the... SRPJ is it 57 or 69? Sorry, I don't have it off the top of my head. 
and I don't think they ever write the the reference numbers on here. Um, but this is the the one woman edition, the second one that they did of Rolling Blazers. Uh, this is from late twenty twenty one. Was it? Because they just, or was it 22? Maybe it's from 22. Because they just put out a new one, I guess, earlier this year. For, uh, they had like a white dial version of this and some other colors. But this is one that I got. I told a story about this, but I was just lucky. I just kept refreshing the page because these things sell so fast. And then I managed to just get it. Where they, I guess they had it available just for a moment. And I hit the buy now and I got it. And I like this. This is like the the dress KX, the 40 millimeter kind of SKX style, but case, but smooth bezel. Uh, you don't have the rotating and all that. And I love the, the colors, fun, pop. Uh, this is not the original bracelet. Um, this is one from Uncle Seiko, it's like the Jubilee. And I thought this was a nice match, an upgrade to this. I think I got inspiration a bit from the Tudor uh, the Black Bay, I don't know, 36, 39, you know, the ones that are the smooth bezel ones. Um, uh, they just uh, put them out on Jubilee over um, Watches and Wonders. I think they show that off with some other watches, but that's kind of a good look. And they did it with a, some of the, the Black Bay dive models, of course. They added the Jubilee availability there, and which, I don't know. Basically, I like, I think it looks good. It's a good upgrade. Better class, overall better bracelet for this watch and uh, really elevates it and um, yeah I like that it's just a fun piece uh, if you want to just put just a bit of color and it can go with any or spot anything and uh, it's not overly done and then I guess maybe this guy was pretty close to being next uh, compared to what I have here you know, left here. Uh, this is the SBDC 111. There's probably other SRP, I think, references, but this is the one that I got. Um, this is one of the original colorways for the smaller wheelers that are about 40, I believe it's 43 millimeters, right? Um, versus, I think the, orig the original ones were 40, 45. So yeah, smaller. And I love this green. It's just a nice green tone that just works um, really well. It's just very attractive. I like, I prefer like an olive kind of military green myself. And everything lines up. This had a crappy ass 6R35 movement before and I, I did a video on that. And so it is running on the NH35. Uh, but it's running way better than the, uh, the 6R35. I don't need that long power reserve, especially if it's erratic and doesn't take actually good time anyways. That power reserve won't mean a damn. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I happily swapped that out myself. And uh, maybe I still have the movement. Maybe I might get it serviced properly one day. I think it's usually the culprit is over lubrication from the factory, but I basically have that worked over and and maybe I, I might drop it back in here someday. But as it is, I like it just the way it is. And I really like it on this uh, Erica's original MN strap, but this is the, the green one with it. It's kind of a tone on tone, but I think that really works well with this uh, particular uh, colorway. And I actually thought about this strap first. I really liked the color and I thought, you know what? And I thought that this watch will look great with that. And that's why I have it paired together. And what else was next? I guess um, it's kind of a draw. I think the tag hoyer was next. And this is the Aqua Racer Solograph. Yes, it is a quartz solar movement, but I love this thing. It's so comfortable and I think it looks really good. Uh, just love the matte finish. Perfect size, 40 millimeters. This is wears really well. It's light. It's got that nice um, easy link kind of style of, of uh, extension. So you can just 
pop it out and just gives you that few mil extra millimeters that's just enough to relieve any kind of tightness uh, on wrist and on my seven inch wrist yeah I don't know I, I just love the color and the, the look of it and I'm trying to do another video on this soon but I have something coming in for this that I want to get together before I do that but it's, it's light uh, titanium is very comfortable uh, this is, has one of the best bezel actions I would say as far as any titan all titanium watches go 60 click and it doesn't feel like gritty and like really harsh feeling like and you know I feel like in the past a lot of uh, titanium dive watches and their bezels can, can kind of sound and feel like um, definitely very cool yes it is pricey but like a lot of things that I would say the collection whatever so it's just some things that if you really like you just go for and unfortunately sometimes there's only one particular way to go about it there's you know um, nobody else makes anything quite like it and it's gonna be priced the way it's gonna be um, and that's you know something like this also really cool uh, military inspired field watch well, Vertex is one of the original dirty dozen makers from World War II and this is a modern recreation at 40 millimeters uh, it's just that dial come on those indexes those block of bloom Arabic numerals excellent super good um it's nice i love this uh watch i just i prefer a field watch i don't usually gravitate to them they look pretty boring that's why if i got one need something more interesting not so basic for me and so definitely the way they did the dial just the proportions of everything i like um and i like that i have the small s seconds that just gives that extra visual interest and just I don't know, mixes it up more for me. And uh, yeah, it's definitely pricey, but I don't want to say necessarily worth it, but what's it, uh, enough for me to buy one? And um, yeah, this is a pretty cool one here. And let's see, I guess we should go to, I think the Zen came before the Zodiac, or did it? Well, it's around that time. And this is the U50, uh, 50th, no, actually it's just a limited edition. I don't think there's any anniversary, but this is the uh, smaller, of course the U50 should be 41 millimeters, but I think that's just at the bezel and the case is actually a little bit smaller than that. So um, this one wears very nicely. I just love that it's fully tegmented, um, black coated. Which I don't usually gravitate towards. I don't usually like all black watches, but I really like the way they did this one. And just something about that blue on here, that gradient dial, it just still pops. Um, just has a lot of character to it. And this just looks so cool and runs great. And um, I did have to, I just did a video. Hopefully that'll be up before this one, but it may be after. Um, I just up, uh, replaced this and up, I don't want to say upgraded it, but there was a little small issue with the dive extension. Um, but they sent me a new one for free just to get that fixed and it should be all good now. And it is slightly different than the one that originally came with the watch. Um, but it's in that video just so you know, it's not hundred percent the same. And I don't know if this is the newest design for their class moving forward or not but um there are some differences a little bit cleaner edge slightly it's not as soft around the edges and uh it's actually a bit more flat across and uh, there's a number quite a number of differences in the details uh but yeah this is an awesome watch um i yeah we're going to talk about that in a moment hopefully and about this and something else and this is the zodiac z09304 i believe this is fairly recent release in the golf kind of colors the golf racing colors with the light blue and the bright uh, orange 
And this is, I like this. I mean, I like Zodiac a lot. You see my videos, I had a few. And uh, this is the one, I like the last one I had, but I couldn't keep both. And I decided to go with this one, something a little bit more fun and vibrant. And again, this also, they, they used to make a model just like this back in the day. So I like that. I did like the, they made a black dial version of this, which looks really good. I think it makes it more, even more punchier against these colors. And it was chronometer too, but that one was at least three, four years ago or so. And um, yeah, they've been long since sold out. Uh, hard to find. They don't come up on the secondary market too often. Um, I would have liked it, but I'm sure it would have been a bit more expensive for an older watch. And these are cool because the, the bracelets expand like this. So it actually is pretty comfortable. It's, it's a nice, you know, Jubilee or five link style bracelet. Um, better action. I mean, the performance on all the Zodiacs that I had for the most part have been pretty good and they were a little off, but I tweaked it and then it was pretty much perfect. Like very, very, very accurate. And um, yeah, they always have good bezel action. Tricky, solid, not really any play. Everything always lines up for me. Yeah, this is a fun one. This is uh, one I enjoy going to the beach with my kids with. It very feels very somehow appropriate for me to take this and have enjoyed this long on the beach with this one. And almost at the end, sort of, um, my Tudor Black Bay 58 Bronze. Um, yeah, I've always liked the kind of Submariner, general Submariner style uh, uh, with the Explorer um, dial. I've done quite a number of homages of that and even of this, uh, but that's something I always like. And I like the fact that that's different than all the other Tudor, Tudor Black Wave out there, uh, at least within the bronze, they're the only ones so far that are using the Explorer dial with the three, uh, nine and six like this. Um, I like that, it's just different and the tone is so nice and rich. And, you know, I have a plan that I don't think I've mentioned yet, but exactly, but uh, how I'm gonna let this patina or maybe in a way not patina. Um, I do like the gold tones, but I think just if I can control where and how much the patina happens, it'll look really unique and really cool too. I'm not going for a full burnout or really dulling the heck out of this. Like I think majority of people are trying to do with bronze. I'm kind of taking a different approach. I'm thinking some model making and special effects. Uh, thinking Star Wars, um, I'll review like my thoughts and plans on this, but yeah, this is a cool watch and uh, I'm glad I finally was able to, you know, find a way and just squeeze this guy in here. And this is on, it's one of its uh, included uh, strap options, the fabric strap. It's not elastic, uh, but it's like the fabric ones that I think the other bronze usually come with. Um, brown and kind of this tan to match, goldish tan to match the, the theme. Uh, but I do like the fact that this comes on the uh, all bronze bracelet. And with the t it was the first one to have the T-fit class too. And it has a particular design. I don't know, I, I really like that. That's a great adjustment and design for their, their class. And they should be introducing it to the rest of the models eventually. But this was the first one to have that. And so I like that distinction and this is a boutique edition as well. So you could supposedly only get this from a boutique, uh, but I did get this on uh, Joma shop actually. And, but hey, it worked out great. Um, check out my video on that. But, uh, but uh, yeah, it's keeping great time. Everything is legit. Um, I like it. Mm. Uh, you know, I'm not going to get into why I went there instead of an authorized dealer, but um, it'll be explained maybe in a later video or review. And I think lastly, oh, well, I forgot my Nevada Grenchen uh, F77. 
um, this, uh, I think the first run, we're the only ones to have like a, a production number, special to the watch, you know, X amount would made and then they would be uh, engraved on the back. Um, I think this is number 101 or 10, 102. It's right down here in the bottom. But that's the case back. It's, it's all closed up. It's a nice watch. It's something that's, I like the Royal Oak, but of course those are so damn expensive and kind of hard to get. Um, this is the next closest thing, but it's it's kind of its own thing. I looked at it in detail and there are quite a number of differences that set it apart from a Royal Oak. Um, but it has a lot of the characteristics of it. Uh, if you're going for that look without having to spend too much money and this is a 37 millimeter one, but because it's kind of integrated, it's not kind of, it is, but it just has an usual way that it does it. Um, they just generally tend to wear slightly larger than their measurements, but in some ways, I think this has some tricks that keep it uh, within the original, you know, stated spec size of 37 millimeters. Uh, we'll get into it later, but this is a cool one. Nice and thin, retro, but it's not... What I like about it, it's not like new, kind of rehash sort of retro. You know, this actually has been a design that they made back in the 70s. And uh, the, uh, the revived brand of Nevada Gretchen, they brought it back again. And I think because they have that history already, and it's not like... They just copy some other things and just made it now without it, you know. I don't want to say Christopher Ward, but yeah, Christopher Ward. The 12 is nice, but I prefer this myself. Um, I think there's just too much hype around the 12 myself. And I don't know, I'm not really digging the dial and the overall look as much as this one. Um, I don't know, not enough people talk about this. They always talk about either the 12 or the PRX. That's why I personally, I'm just a little sick of it, have been for a while, and when it's, when it's so like overworked to like, uh, isn't that such a great thing, or is it, you know, for this style of watch, then I kind of don't want to be on board with that, I want to go do something different, and so there we go. Um, this is not one of, I would consider one of the mainstream integrated sports watches that are kind of new out right now. Though, they did sell out, but they will be back. Um, and they will have a kind of like a retro brown fume dial, which the uh, the original vintage model did have a version of. So that's something to look out for. Oh, on this Vertex, I believe they will uh, make a smaller 36 millimeter version of this. Uh, so it'll be closer to like the uh, original Dirty Dozen, you know, vintage size and stuff, but with. I imagine they'll try to keep scale with this this nice, you know, with the 3D markers and everything, just scale it down for such a size. And lastly, here, this is the latest acquisition. This is a Grand Seiko SBGX um, 115. I, I think I explained this in the unboxing. And yes, I know they get long, and I did put a fast forward in it so you can just get straight to the unboxing more. But yeah, uh, I just have this thing for white dial divers, black bezels, and uh, it harkens back to uh, a Tag Heuer quartz diver that I had back from 1995 for about 12 years, and I somehow lost it. And I don't know, I just always wanted to just kind of replace it with something along those general lines, a classic, fairly classic and somewhat basic, uh, you know, I guess you can just classic more than basic uh, dive features, you know, and very classic dive style dial, uh, generally the shape, oyster bracelet, uh, rotating bezel, this is fully graduated, and no date, that's, I don't know, that's why just something, um, but yet the details make it different. Um, this is pretty close to a 43, it's like 42 point something. Uh, but I think it works pretty good still. Um, let's put it on my C 
seven inch wrist real quickly. And it does have the Marine ma uh, Master style clasp. See, it, it can like fully ratchet open like that. And you can just, of course, close it and pull it back down as much as you need. Just like that. And yeah, I think this is good for like, I'm looking for something more modern but classic too and I don't know for Grand Seiko this is one of their first quartz divers um, also as far as I'm aware this is the only Grand Seiko diver that has a white dial I like that it's also as far as divers in general go for Seiko let alone Grand Seiko right just overall uh, they generally at least have a date, if not a day and date, and this is one that doesn't have either. It's just time only, which is great. Uh, fully graduated, um, thermally compensated, 9F61 movement, spot on, hasn't even deviated uh, for basically almost a month, and I don't think it will. This this thing, they, they made these things really, really good, and it's great all-purpose, you know. Uh, watch um, and it's different you know it's not just another uh, you know um, Seamaster or Submariner or something like that along those lines uh, Grand Seiko and I think it's kind of cool that you know most people may not necessarily think of Grand Seiko as a dive tool watch uh, but this could very much do that job really well uh, they mostly think of it as spring drive, um, and of course the, the it's a lot of finishing on the cases and and the nice work on the dial, especially texture. This really doesn't have a lot of that. I mean, it should have some lots of finishing, but it's pretty. It doesn't show it off as well or as much as other Grand Seikos, and there's no definitely not a whole lot of going on in terms of texture with the dial, but. It just looks clean and uh, purpose built and pretty no nonsense and uh, I dig it and so that's my current collection and so I don't know leave a comment what you think keep it nice um, otherwise uh, I just will ignore it and better yet I'll just, just delete it instantly because I, I keep things positive on my channel and even outside whenever I might comment and get into it with some people I don't get into it I just uh, I don't waste time like that if uh, I call hostile or other <laughs> toxic uh, personalities let's say but anyway so yeah anyways this is where it's at I'm thinking these days I'm really contemplating the collection and just trying to again keep it within this uh and maybe more concise i'm really trying to focus in on what i feel like i differences between what i really really want and what i would really would be nice to have you know um the latter being like it's not as definite i could you know it would be nice to have it but if I don't, it's not, uh, you know, it's not, uh, I wouldn't say the end of the world, but, you know, um, there are other things there, right? If that doesn't work out, uh, but I'm trying to think what are the ones that I currently have that I really want to keep and I really want it, right? I like it a lot. And the ones that um, maybe even I don't have yet, what do I like to play in and what can I uh, feel that maybe I could move? And... At this time, there's a few. I mean, definitely, I really like the black weight bonds. It's a style that I've been playing around with for a while, and mostly in the affordable homage sector. But I finally decided if I'm going to do this style, at least I'm going to try to do it with one of the brands that is associated with, like, say, the, the Rolex vintage one. I forget the reference, but they have, of course, the Rolex Explorer dial submariners, which is very rare and expensive, as I understand it. And 
uh, even though Tudor per se never really made it their, themselves, but their sense are, are really the rocks, they kind of get that that pass or that connection to 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 that. And so yeah, so then I feel better about getting this style with Tudor, and it, they they have an excellent execution of that. Uh, I like this because it's unique. It's gonna be kind of hard to sell anyways because of the wanky crown, although it's totally workable. Um, and it runs excellent and I just love but I just like the uniqueness of it it's probably one of the only micro brands I really have here isn't it uh, I used to have a lot more but uh, as you know from my videos but um, yeah I just like the size it's vintage it's modern um, it's original and yeah it's, it's, it's a good one it's very uh, uh, you know, works very well with a lot of straps. Um, vertex, I want to try to keep a, a, you know, most of my stuff have bezels or something like a tacky meter. It's very rare that I have a clean uh, watch without anything. And, you know, if anyone should do have that, I think Vertex would be good to keep for that reason. And, um, I don't know, it's just a different style compared to the rest of them so it runs great too it's really nice and i like it i like that it has heritage to to uh, military ties too so there's that um i really like my aqua racer I just like the size the weight everything about it and i have something special planned for this too so that's gonna be there this one for sure i really just the execution on the U50 in general is really good, and this particular uh, limited edition version, uh, uh, yeah, I just I missed the opportunity to get one. Like, gosh, it must have been at least half a year, maybe a little bit more. It was almost the same time. It was, came out roughly after I just purchased the 103 Classic 12, and I was like, oh man, this is a lot already, and like this was actually even more, so I couldn't do it, but they happen to bring it back out and just the last remaining ones and i said okay i gotta do it now so yeah and that's why between the scenes i've been trying to trim it down i had a 104 which is still for sale but um if i had to keep one of the Z three zins this would be it and so that's why this has been on on sale but i'm always waiting to just only sell it at a particular cost or price otherwise it wouldn't be worth it for me because I really still like this one a lot. Um, but um, yeah, I uh, I keep coming back to it and I was like, damn, it's a handsome watch. Good looking, really cool. It's, it's really nice for Reverse Panda. It's just a great watch, but if they don't sell it for the what I want, would like to get back for it, then I'm just, just as happy keeping it. However, <laughs> uh, Coincidentally, really reinforcing this idea I'm talking about recent, not only here, but to myself earlier in the day. It's like someone did eventually, I heard like, ching ching. And uh, yeah, somebody bought this. And I checked what it was, and uh, it was someone that bought this one. So this will sadly make its way out of my collection. Um, but my thinking also was that as far as the reverse pattern, chronographs go there are actually quite a lot of nice good ones out there a uh, variety of them i can think of and again if i wanted to get something of this general design back um i do have some options so that's why i felt like out of some of the stuff here this could go because of that fact that there could be a reasonable replacement that could you know kind of take its place at some point in the future if it just does so and it has um i really like this the uh seiko sbc 005 really nice chronograph i love the details on the dial and i mean i i like the original one the, uh, the one that almost looks identical to this but supposedly it's like about a millimeter or so larger and it has different buttons and some other things in a square uh, date when it, it when i look back at it it doesn't look as quite as nice or refined as this one that came afterwards and that one was under i think 
Seiko Brights. Um, yeah, and it was kind of like an anniversary limited edition too, but, and I had missed a boat on that. And then this came out a few years later and then I really wanted to, but it was too expensive at the time. But eventually I kind of just said, fuck it. I just bite the bullet and go for it. Uh, Cause I really wanted this and I like it. I really like it. I mean, I thought about selling it, but I think I would really regret it. Um, Okay, there's a lot of things about this that I like that's going on here, and it's this good looking watch. And um, Seiko, this one I wanted to well replace the white and black diver. Uh, it's a Grand Seiko, it's super accurate. Um, it's unique within the Grand Seiko family, I think, for being uh, no date and the only white dial diver. And I like those aspects of it. And it's, it's a solid, good watch. And even though it's a bit larger than I normally would go with these days, um, it is, just like Seiko, they're very wearable. And it's just still been very comfortable. And surprisingly, even though it's surprisingly weighty for a quartz movement, uh, compared to even a mechanical chronograph, um, I think it's because of the movement is actually, there's a lot of metal in that quartz movement. So it's a quality movement. Uh, the only things I think I still have questions about, uh, and the, the G-Shock over here, that's that's not even worth it for me to try. I, I should just keep uh, G-Shock anyways, and a lot of people say they don't really technically count in the collection, so uh, we'll just leave that at that. Uh, the only questions are maybe potentially Zodiac. I do really like this colorway. I want something kind of funky retro and some vibrant pop colors um i kind of have that in here but you know i don't know this is a good find it's limited to 888 pieces i think this is one of the best ones that they did it's great size um it's been performing pretty darn well too i think it's about plus it was around four seconds or so a day um but i don't know how often I'd want to wear that over my sports or divers and stuff. That's just, that's the, what, that's what I gravitate towards more than dress watches or even everyday type of watches, as you want to say, or sport watches other than, you know, the Thule ones. Um, I don't know. We'll see. And I really like the Willard, um, this colorway and everything I did, you know, I've had some accessories strap for these um yeah i did mess around with the movement but it is better for it and whoever buys it will get the original 6r35 that that it should come with anyways and they want to they can replace it in there although i highly recommend getting it you know looked at and probably serviced first before you try to do that because it was running quite erratically as quite a good number of them seem to do out of the box unfortunately uh, and we'll see about this, the F77. Again, somewhat similar to this in terms of space and, and relationship to everything else here. It's kind of more of that similarity of a, no, a sports watch without the bezels and all the fancy stuff. I like the angles. It reminds me of the Royal Oak, but it's not. But sometimes I feel like Maybe the way that these lugs are done, they do seem a little bit on the, like they don't, these go down, right? But, come on, focus. They do go down, but um, when on wrist, you know, these, unfortunately, these male, seemingly female end links, they don't really go down that much. They're pretty much fixed in this, so sometimes it feels like it could be slightly on the wider side i mean it's within reason it's not that bad really but there's just that and then you know sometimes depending on the angle where it rests you can see it feel like it's kind of angling out a bit like like there you know what i mean and so there's that, and then it's just the design of the times. I noticed like there's like a Olex and Wash um, 
model that they put out not too long ago, at least kind of announced, but it's, I don't know if it's being made yet. It has this, it's kind of an integrated look, something like this, but it also kind of like has this thing where like the, the bracelet actually seems like it almost sort of hangs off a case more rather than a perfect integration from bracelet from case or lugs to bracelet you know like this how the case how the case just ends sort of abruptly on the sides yeah and then and then this the, these bracelets it's kind of hanging off of this I guess it's technically a full female anyway. It just kind of kind of comes out and then it kind of just drops off. It just kind of swings out on the outside of the case versus feeling like it's kind of more part of it, I guess. Now, if, you, if your wrist was wider enough, I think it wouldn't be as noticeable. It, it feels like it flows better like this, right? But as soon as you got a smaller wrist and this drops down in a way, this part kind of opens up here. So you see like the top of the bracelet. And if I'm being honest, that throws me off a little bit. And I don't think there's, I don't know what they could have done with this because it's just the way the case was originally designed. It's the style back then. I guess it's style now because of that. But you know, if this was female, I don't see that they could swing and clear this, this corner of the, uh, the lugs here. I think it would get kind of hung up or Maybe even stuck under here. They could click, go under, you know. Uh, they needed to angle this kind of back in a little bit more so that it could clear it and maybe swing down. But as it is, it just sort of hangs out here. So even though this is a, kind of one of the more smaller watches, right? 37 is actually one millimeter smaller than the original, which was, I believe, 38. Um, you kind of need a wider wrist, I think, would work better. As it is, it just kind of feels like, sort of, sometimes I feel like it's just out there and hangs and then drops. And then you just see the top of these bracelets here. Um, again, I can understand it's the look and design of this watch. And it's not the worst thing. And when I look at drawing a visible line from this over to this corner, it, can, it, just, it does match, kind of. And it goes from here to this corner and then down. It's not like it kind of like, you know, has a weird like, like, like it doesn't feel like it doesn't flow from like that invisible line from this to here. It doesn't feel like 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 this bracelet is up here and then it missed a mark or it's too low and then it goes over it, you know? <laughs> kind of hard to explain, but if I wear it back further. I have a little bit better, but I mean, this is a nice looking watch. It's thin, sporty, nice taper. Actually, one of the better class that they made. It's better than the, the one that uh, didn't have these buttons just snap like on the Depth Master and I think the Antarctic. So we'll see if this one is a keeper or not, too. Um, what's in the future to be honest i think primarily actually more chronographs uh that's always been my thing and i uh i'd like to get a zenith but that's going to take a huge commitment there obviously otherwise a i can see myself with another tag hoyer but and you know not in a dive or model quite like that but more of a uh, chronograph. Uh, Octavia would be again an obvious replacement for this, um, but that does cost more than this. So uh, that's one thing. But I can imagine going after a, a career of some sort as well. Um, a glass, the glass box, the one that's black with the reverse panda. I think that one's cool. Um, I kind of like that more than the blue one because I, I like that odd date at the twelve. Yeah, the chronograph hand kind of goes across it, but I mean, it's still legible and and it's not really all that blocked, so not that big a deal. And I think it looks gives it more visual interest, and it doesn't cut into this sort of sub dial that's on the blue version. Or um, 
there are some, some uh, one or two other Carreras that I'd be interested in as well, but again, those chronographs generally cost more than the Zin. That's why this is pretty damn good value, even at the price that you know I'm asking for it, which is at least as much as what I paid, probably a, a tad over. But you know, again, I wanted to make it really as worth it as possible within reason. I'm not trying to you know ask for like thousands over what this watch originally cost or anything that I don't think it's worth that much but um you know I think I think it was a fair value uh for what I could get for it but yeah uh we'll see so this might be further reduced here but I think currently bam 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 and there so this one will be out soon and then these potentially I mean, uh, I don't know. I still like these. This is a fun one, especially if you can switch up with straps to match. Uh, this one's just cool, you know, just to wear it just as is. I love the angularness of it, of course. Um, and then this is a good one, also. Uh, you know, one that's something also, there's so many classic Seiko designs, but I think this one would be. Um, uh, a good one, you know, it's one of the classes, I've got modern reinterpretation, a bit more wearable at 30, sorry, uh, 43, I think, and, uh, yeah, um, you know, crown at the four, which I don't really have anymore with this, with my sake, was other than this guy, um, but this is more of a, Classic uh, Seiko design overall compared to this, this is a more modern iteration of it. It's, um, but there are some vintage elements, but anyways, that's where I'm at. So, um, yeah, this went on long, but I have to try to get through 12 plus watches and then share a bit of on each of them. So, you try to divide that up. Uh, we'll see if I edit this or not, but. It is what it is. So anyways, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, enjoy your watches.